This is my new shrimp jar and it's surprisingly easy to create so I want to go over how I set this up to try and help other people who are looking to make their own shrimp jar. I did have a lot of things left over from my other aquarium setups but in all honesty you can make something like this with any old hardscape that you have access to because these are very very basic. I'm going to be using a 1.7 US gallon or 6.5 litre jar for this particular setup because it's easily large enough for a couple of shrimp. Before I go any further I just want to quickly say that this shrimp jar will be using the Wallstad method for filtration meaning that the fast grown stem plants and floating plants will keep the water safe for the shrimp. Thankfully shrimp have a very low bio load so even a couple of stem plants and a few floating plants should easily be able to maintain safe and stable water parameters. Wallstad setups use topsoil for the nutrient layer in the substrate so I start the build process by sieving the topsoil to remove as much debris as possible. I know people often skip this step but I would highly recommend it when you're working with a small jar because even a small amount of debris can take up a large amount of the space in the jar. I managed to remove all of this debris within a couple of handfuls of topsoil so it's definitely worth doing because this is essentially useless inside of the jar. Depending on your setup you'll want around one inch of topsoil for the nutrient layer in the bottom of the jar. For this particular setup I only plan to use stem plants as the background of the jar so there's no point in covering the full base with the topsoil. Soil. Once the soil is in the jar I apply a little pressure to try and remove as much of the air as possible to speed things up later in the process. This clip shows that there's around one inch of soil towards the rear of the jar where the stem plants will be and then it tilts off towards nothing at the front. I usually use the regular cheap Pedex Roman dark gravel for my Wallstad setups but I wanted something as close to black as possible for this particular jar because I wanted it to contrast with my yellow cherry shrimp. Unfortunately most blacks sands and gravels were out of stock when I set this jar up but I did see that Petex sold a jet black gravel so I decided to give it a try even though the granules of the gravel are far larger than what I usually use. Being a little keen to get this shrimp jar set up I ended up spilling around 20% of the gravel on the floor but I'm sure you won't make this mistake. I never pre-wash any of my Petex gravels because I've used them so much now that I know that they are fine to use right out of the bag but if you're using a different brand you might want to wash it before you put it in the jar. As you can see I have around one inch of gravel capping the topsoil to lock any nutrients in and prevent it from leaking into the jar's water column and potentially causing problems for my shrimp. This is very important because even a small amount of soil in the jar can be enough to spike toxins in the water and be fatal to your shrimp. I always use a tap water conditioner with my water to try and remove any impurities in there and there's a bunch of brands on the market that basically do the same thing so go with whatever you can find in your area. Area. With the gravel cap and layer in place and the dechlorinator added it's time to add some water to the jar but I only add enough water to cover the highest part of the substrate in around one inch of water. You can see the trapped air escaping from the substrate in the back left of this clip and it doesn't take long but I do think that applying the pressure to the topsoil earlier in the video did help speed this process up because sometimes it can take a long time for the air to escape. I want to make some moss mats for this shrimp jar and I usually use the stainless steel squares as the base because they won't leak anything into the water column and potentially cause problems. It's far easier to plan the scape of a jar with the stainless steel base in there because the curved glass warp sizes and dimensions making it a pain to work out what's happening from the outside. At this stage I realise that I made a mistake with the seam of the jar being right at the front of the scape with this vertical line running right down the main point of view but again I'm sure you won't make this mistake. Now this isn't a serious aqua escape it's just a little shrimp jar to keep on the desk that I work at so I decided to keep moving forward rather than starting over from scratch. Now as you can see from this view there's plenty of space in the jar even with this stainless steel grid in it so I decided to add some lava rock for hardscape too. At the time of the build I did have three little lava rocks left over from some of my aquarium setups but only one of these should be enough. I ended up choosing the one in the middle because it was the smallest lava rock I had and it's probably the least likely to be used in one of my aquariums due to its smaller size. The lava rock fits in the jar with ease and this is also inert so there's no risk of a tweak in the pH of the jar by leaking anything into the water column and putting my shrimp at risk. As you can see there's plenty of room for stem plants in the background of the jar with the rock and moss mats serving as the mid and foreground objects. For this particular jar I'll be using Rotala Rotunda Folia, 
Christmas moss and salvinia, but there really are an absolute ton of plants out there that will work perfectly fine. I bunch the rotala into tall and short groups so I can plant the longer ones at the back and I'm ready to plant. Now it's not essential, but this step is so much easier if you have access to some aquascape and tweezers, and I only use the cheap $10 set off Amazon and they work perfectly fine. I try and put the taller rotala rotunda folia stems at the back of the jar and the shorter ones in front of them. In reality though, this really doesn't mean much because over time they will both grow to be the same length anyway, so this is optional. At this stage, the rotala rotunda folia is leaning over, but this is totally normal and don't worry if your stem plant of choice does this too. Over the coming day or two, the rotala will pick up and grow vertical towards the light source and it's totally normal. I only have a small amount of Christmas moss to hand, so I need to get the most out of this small amount. I remove the stainless steel square from the jar and get ready to make my little moss mat. Now this really is a simple concept and I add some of the Christmas moss on top of the stainless steel square and I spread it out and then I use some thread to lock it in place by wrapping the thread around the stainless steel square over and over and over again. I know that this doesn't look the best right now but over the coming weeks this moss will grow out and provide a grazing area for the shrimp to feed on biofilm and algae. I place the moss mat into the shrimp jar and try and make sure that it's the main focal point when I glance over at my work desk. I have this tiny USB heater for the jar and it did work well when I initially tested it out but since then I have seen some bad reviews so I decided to upgrade. I ended up going with the 25 watt Hyga HG083 as it should be more than enough to maintain a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius in this jar but a heater is not essential for Neocaridina shrimp. I kept my old shrimp jar at room temperature for almost five months throughout the winter here in the UK with minimal issues so I honestly do think that heaters truly are optional with Neocaridina unless you're actively breeding them. I place the heater onto the right hand side of the jar because the curve of the glass should be able to hide it from my main viewing point when placed on my desk. Then I top up the jar with the rest of the water until it's pretty much full to the very top. Floating plants are excellent additions to any type of wallstad setup because they do a great job of naturally purifying your water and keeping it safe for your shrimp. On top of that, shrimp also love grazing on the biofilm and algae that ends up growing on the bottom of the floating plants. Personally, I use salvinia for this, but redroot floaters and duckweed can also work very well. Now, I do like Amazon frog bit, but I wouldn't recommend it for wallstad jars because the roots grow so fast that they can easily get down to the substrate and grow into the soil making it a pain to remove them. I add plenty of salvinia to the surface of this jar but you really don't need that much. Even a small amount of salvinia, red root floaters or duckweed will quickly propagate and cover the surface of such a small jar probably within a week. This is what the shrimp jar looks like at this stage and I'm really happy with this initial setup and it looks far better than I thought it would. I move the jar over to my desk and as you can see it is looking a little dark so it is time to add some light. I ran my old shrimp jar on this cheap USB lighting unit and it worked perfectly fine for months but I did decide to upgrade to a new lighting unit for this jar. I opted for the 6 watt Hyga HG033 as it has an automated timer inside of it and it will easily meet the lighting needs for the plants that I've used in this particular shrimp jar. As you can see the light does have a pretty bulky bracket on it so I did think that I might have to go back to using the cheaper USB light for the jar anyway. After playing around with it for around 10 minutes I realised that it's just going to be best to rest the light on top of the jar rather than try and get that bracket to fit and so far it's worked surprisingly well. I was actually surprised by how much light this unit was able to put out but remember the cheapy USB light could probably run this jar without issue so if you are on a budget that's a perfectly fine option to use. Here's what the shrimp jar looks like with the light unit fitted and turned on and I'm really pleased with how the jar is currently looking. I noticed this random little detritus worm swimming around in the jar and I'm guessing it came in with the Rotala or Salvinia from one of my other tanks but thankfully detritus worms are not harmful to shrimp. Not only do I prefer the look of this particular shrimp jar setup compared to my old one but this one should be so much easier to maintain. In addition to that with the stem plants, floating plants and moss mat this particular setup should easily be able to meet the needs of a small colony of shrimp. After leaving the jar to sit for a while I do temperature check it and the tiny little heater is doing its job but I realise that I incorrectly set the temperature at 23 degrees celsius 
rather than the 20 degrees Celsius I was aiming for. Here's some clips of the jar today as I didn't take any video footage of the jar as the plants grew in. I would highly recommend that you leave your jar to grow in before you add any shrimp to it and a four week period should easily be enough for most people provided you use fast growing stem plants and floating plants in your shrimp jar. If possible test your water with a water kit before you add your shrimp to ensure that it's safe as well. Not only does the waiting period leave your plants to gain a footing and start growing so they can use up any excess nutrients in the water to keep your shrimp safe but it also lets algae and biofilm start to grow and act as a food source for your shrimp. The waiting period also lets beneficial bacteria and archaea colonies start to build up and help to maintain safe and stable water parameters too. So fast forward a couple of weeks and it's time to get some shrimp. Thankfully I have a breeding colony of yellow cherry shrimp in my 12 gallon tank so I'm going to be moving some of these over to the shrimp jar. I would guess that there's around 40 shrimp in here right now so taking five of them out shouldn't be an issue. These tiny little five dollar shrimp nets are easily worth the money as it's so much easier to catch shrimp with one of these rather than the larger nets designed for fish. I ended up netting out six yellow cherry shrimp for the jar and putting them in my viewing booth just to quickly inspect them prior to adding them to the shrimp jar I just built. If you are buying your shrimp online or from a pet store checking for any signs of fungus or other type of infection or any potential issues is definitely a good idea before you put them into the jar. Drip acclimatizing your shrimp to the water in the jar is also recommended but the water with my tank and my shrimp jar are almost identical so I decide to add the shrimp straight away. Now there is only a small amount of water in a shrimp jar so if you are going to try and drip acclimatize your shrimp to the water parameters you have in your jar using a small pipette and just taking small drops over every few minutes is a quick and easy way to do this. Thankfully my initial plan of contrasting the black substrate and black lava rock with the yellow shrimp works well and I really love how this looks. It didn't take long for the shrimp to settle in and start to look for food in the jar. As I mentioned earlier the wait period of around four weeks between setting the shrimp jar up and actually adding your shrimp to it lets algae and biofilm develop on the various surfaces in here providing the shrimp with a natural food source. If needed I will add food to the jar but due to its small size it would literally be a single fish flake or maybe a single bloodworm as this should be enough for the shrimp with the algae and biofilm that will naturally grow. As I have a breeding colony of yellow cherry shrimp in my 12 gallon tank I don't have to worry about overpopulation issues in the jar either. If these shrimp do start to have babies then I can simply scoop them out and put them into my 12 gallon tank to avoid any population problems. This jar is on the main table where I work and it's been great being able to glance over and see these little guys going about their business in the jar. The moss mat seems to be a big hit with the shrimp too and I often see them grazing on it and it hasn't even grown in yet so I can't wait to see how this looks in a couple of months. This is a female shrimp as you can see the egg saddle forming on her back so with any luck in a couple of months I'll have some baby shrimp in here. Here's what the shrimp jar looks like right now and I'm so happy with how this project turned out. Anyway guys that brings the video to an end thanks for watching and have a good day.